Hi, I'm Jerry Justice and I'm going to show you the Globecam in-car camera system for CrimSafe Talking Tech. Today we're going to take you through to the Car 47 and show you the in-car cameras and uh, the system and how it actually works. We have five cameras in this particular car. Um, we can have up to six, but uh, five in this particular car. We have a, uh, a face view, which is sort of a standard shot. We have a front view facing forward through the windscreen. We have an over shoulder shot, which looks over and through the windscreen, but can also see the driver and see what his feet are doing, what his hands are doing and what have you. Uh, then we have a tail light camera. Uh, which we'll show you and uh, additionally we have then effects cameras usually the cameras five and six are effects cameras so this one in particular is a, a tracking cam which slides uh, up and down to give it like a 3d effect when you're looking at the driver um, looking through the, the gear lever okay in the back of the car we have the heart of the system now the this is the uh, what we call the uh, cpu uh, which controls all the switching uh, of the cameras, any motor functions, uh, switches on the uh, transmitter and pretty much everything else. It's a, it's, a, it's a computer in there. The system is completely remote controlled so that from a hut we actually transmit uh, to, the, uh, to the heart of the system uh, where we control the switching between various cameras, we can uh, mo uh, control the motor functions and anything else and of course also we need to turn the transmitter on so we can actually turn the transmitter on and off. Okay, to get all the different angles and make sure that we get as much of the coverage as possible, uh, we have cameras, uh, the headlight cameras, and of course this um, little camera, which is a uh, taillight camera. Now you'll notice that this is actually specifically made for a Holden uh, taillight, and it's 3D printed. We, each of the uh, various cars, the Mercedes, the Falcon, or whatever, Nissans, they will have separate cameras, different housings for these. Now these are fairly, although they look like they're going to be quite in a dangerous spot, they, we lose very few cameras. Um, they do get damaged, the housing on this particular one may break, but we will, as long as we can get it recovered, and the marshals give it back to us, generally we can repair them with a new housing and uh, it's ready to go again. But we do lose a few cameras, but uh, it's not too bad. To keep things as interesting as possible, obviously what we do is we do a lot of innovations and uh, various angles that, uh, where the camera has to be made very specific to the task. A couple of these instances is here. This is the uh, headlight camera. Now, you'll see it's a little bit bulky, but the reason is that it actually has a clear view film that uh, winds through. We can remote control this um, so that as soon as any sort of uh, tire or uh, rubbish gets on the screen, we can actually drive the motor and it clears the, uh, the lens. Obviously, what we do is we try and find any particular location where we can fit a camera. And one of these locations is the side trim on a uh, Commodore and uh, this will actually be in uh, James Courtney's car. Now, as you can see, this is a standard unit. It's got a uh, clear lens and a light in there. So what we do is we design something specific to go in there. This is the unit that we've uh, designed. As you can see, it fits in quite snugly and has almost 180 degrees view. So when a car is coming alongside and banging doors, you can see quite clearly. This camera has actually survived fairly well. We haven't lost a, a damaged one of these yet. What we've done is uh, from our other division, which is uh, RefCam, uh, which is an award-winning uh, unit for us, uh, which is mechanically stabilised, we've carried that through to this particular item, giving X and Y uh, stabilisation. So you can see that if this was a roll bar and the roll bar is moving, you can see the camera stays very still. So it corrects for any movements. So a, a little bit like if you look at the motor, uh, Moto GP, you'll see the uh, camera on the back, the, what they call the doctor shot, and moving around uh, compensating for uh, any movements. But this does it in both X and Y. that uh, all we do is uh, motor racing with uh, touring cars, V8 supercars and what have you, but we actually do a lot more than that. Um, we do the Macau Grand Prix for instance, so 
that has three categories, which is super bikes, Formula 3 and World Touring Car Championship cars. Now obviously the World Touring Car Championship cars are very much like a V8 supercar with the equipment that we install. Motorbikes has to be extremely light, small, low battery consumption so that we can keep it all nice and compact. Um, and then of course we have Formula 3. Well, because the cameras have to be external, they're very different to, uh, let's say, a V8 supercar. So what we do is we have a, a wing camera. This has just come back from Macau. Um, and the wing also helps um, not uh, create too much aero problem for them. What we do is we have two cameras, one in the front and one in the rear. And the front one obviously is going to collect all the dirt that gets kicked up. So again, we have a clear view uh, film that we can remote control. So if it gets a bit dirty, we just clear it. And uh, that's the end of that. So again, uh, there are very many, many types of uh, different uh, systems or kits that we actually need to cover all these different sports. Globecam likes to keep innovating uh, because what we do is we actually manufacture, design and build a lot of our own equipment. And we have to keep uh, ahead of the game. We have a lot of experience. We've got uh, staff that have been working in the industry since, in motor racing since 1986, when uh, the first onboard motorcycle cameras live to air happened. Uh, it was the first time in the world. Now, since then, obviously, there's been progressive development, and we don't intend uh, stopping this development. If you have a look at this particular camera, this is our uh, current camera that we use. But of course, what we've had is we've had a, a, a camera designed specifically for Globecam, and uh, this is, uh, we believe, the smallest in the world that has uh, full 1080 and full remote control. Um, we can we already use this in our award-winning RefCam system and uh, obviously this will be implemented uh, in next year in uh, motorsport. Uh, the quality is just fantastic. It has electronic stabilisation and uh, full remote control of uh, pretty much e every feature in it. Now that you've seen the system uh, inside a race car with uh, up to six cameras, the question is probably, well, how do we get this to the viewer? Now, it's very easy to get uh, with action cams inside a car and you can get some very high quality, nice footage, but of course you can't get that live to the viewer. So what we do is we actually uh, have a ground-based system where we transmit out of the car and uh, to up to 24 antennas around a track, uh, a case in point is say Bathurst, where we have uh, uh, optical fibre connecting all these 24 antennas and they could be 12 core to 24 core and up to around 15 kilometres so it's quite a complex uh, system that you can't do with things like your action cams and you have to have a good quality team and uh, this is why you the viewer end up getting high quality pictures uh, back on your TV. We've been robbed a couple of times actually. So we had this screen installed. For cheap alternative. They look identical. So you think you're getting an equivalent product and you're not. Most Crimsafe lookalikes can pop out because they're only held in with a piece of plastic. But Crimsafe screw clamp locks the mesh and spreads the impact. It's solid right. and sturdy and definitely instills a lot of confidence in us. If you pay for what you get, Crimsafe is definitely the way to go. Yeah. Better off paying the extra and getting the better product. Because if it's not Crimsafe, it's not Crimsafe.